Hello friends, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. This is the re-recording of episode 19, which had some problems with the initial upload on YouTube and people were not able to review it properly. It was getting stuck after 8 or 9 minutes or so. So uh, I decided to re-record it and I was away for a week, so this is why it's taken too long for me to come back to this but we will be going through the panels and aircraft systems and the cockpit layout of Boeing 747-8 the Queen of Skies in this episode so without further ado let's jump in and start uh, discussing the panels in the cockpit as you see we are in the cockpit everything is cold and dark and we will start with the overhead panel and go through the panels from left to right and discuss what all those panels are let me just zoom out a little bit to make it more visible and I will probably skip the ones that are not functioning uh, in this version of the aircraft at the moment and as I said and always say I am using a 747 mod that's created by Salty Simulations a big credit to those guys working on this aircraft to make it better uh, I will post the link to the mod uh, at the description field of the video so let's start from the left top this is the electrical uh, engine control panel which is inoperable at the moment so we are not going to worry about that this is the IRS uh, panel where you switch the knobs to align your IRS system for your position on the earth uh, down below is the standby power or your electrical panel and what you do usually is flick the standby power to auto and then turn on the batteries to provide power to the aircraft and as you hear in the background now we have power and also we have external power available which we can turn on and get some power and if you check the screens now they are live and after this you need to align your IRS system because it takes some time so I suggest you to rotate the knobs to nav to align your IRS system and it will be displayed over here time to align six minutes right there and below that external power APU generator 1 and 2 this one has two generators two APU generators and then your uh, bus tie switches which we will leave at auto at all times and then the bus switches or the generator control switches whether they are on or off so on and so forth below that is the hydraulic panel we really don't have too much to do over here uh, they are on by default and we don't touch it uh, usually in the simulator I don't know uh, if there are any checks that are done in real life operations because I have less experience with 747. Down below is the uh, the light uh, switches for circuit breaker and overhead panel. So if I turn this, as you see, the overhead panel has some lights now. Uh, this is the glare shield and panel floodlight, which is this guy over here. If you look there that's the floodlight and the in, in the inner one is the glare shield as you see this is the dome light which is a dome light pretty much uh, this is uh, the panel floodlights and aisle, aisle stand lights which is at the back of the cockpit gives some lighting to the pedestal area um, over there to, to this area uh, and lights up the pedestal panel too okay over here the captain's radio panel is at the top which doesn't have any functions these are the engine fire test switches and APU fire test switches and cargo fire basically your fire panel or fire extinguisher system panel uh, engine starter switches are here this is the fuel jettison uh, switches or system where you need if you need to dump some jet fuel uh, to reduce your weight this is how you do it 
uh, down below is the fuel pumps center left and right wings for 3 2 and 1 and your crossfeed switches which we don't touch usually in the simulator over here is your anti-ice system uh, which we will flick to auto if they are not before taking off and then your window heats and window wipers are over here and then down below is the landing lights, runway turn off lights and taxi lights. Over on this panel, um, at the top, uh, if I can get a better, that's the fuel transfer from reserve tanks to the main tanks, which this aircraft has some reserve tanks. If you go to fuel and balance, as you see, reserve tank two, three. Uh, they are empty at the moment so that's switches to transfer fuel from those tanks to the main tanks this is the ram air uh, turbine switch which doesn't have any function at the moment air data doesn't have any function passenger oxygen doesn't have any function cockpit voice recorder yaw dumper is always auto uh, in this aircraft uh, over here is the uh, pressurization panel where you change your cabin pressurization based on your altitude which is not working uh, at this point in time with the current version of the mod and it's not working at all with the default 747 down below is your air conditioning system where you can adjust the temperatures of the flight deck and passenger um, or the cargo temperature um, and then your recirculation upper and lower deck recirculation switches which recirculates the air uh, your trim air and packs are down below which we don't touch and APU and engine bleeds are over here and they are default on by default so we don't need to touch them as well down below is the beacon nav lights, strobe, wing lights, logo light and this is the, uh, the uh, integrated light test switch which is not working at the moment okay from there I think we can swing down to the MCP and APHIS panels so this is the APHIS panel over here this knob lets you to set your radio or barometric minimums and reset it by flicking that and you can set your radio minimums from here this is your barometric pressure setting uh, which you can switch between hectopascals and inches mercury uh, and flick the switch to adjust your barometric pressure or simply press BK to set the to the current barometric pressure setting at the airport you are uh, parked from there this is the weather information on the ND, status, waypoint, airport information, position and terrain which uh, we will see here in a second and although the, the brightnesses as you see are dim on these panels these knobs are used to increase the brightnesses of those uh, that's the floodlight the upper and the the inner one in inner one is the floodlight and the outer one is the uh, panel flight light this is the map light which is above the captain's head like a dome light or spotlight uh, which shines through here these are the display brightness switches as you see that display is bright now and I can make the PFD brighter that's how you adjust the brightness of these two screens and these two over here are the brightness switches for uh, these panels over here back to the MCP uh, auto throttle, arm, disarm, flight director uh, your throttle mode, your speed mode your speed uh, selector knob is here LNAV and VNAV uh, lateral navigation, vertical navigation, your heading selector, uh, flight level change, altitude, uh, I'm sorry, holding, heading hold switches here, your vertical speed and your vertical speed mode where you set your desired vertical speed for climb if you are uh, going to do a uh, 
managed uh, no selected uh, climb your altitude selector knob is here your altitude hold is here uh, localizer and approach modes and engaging the autopilots this this aircraft has three autopilot systems left center and uh, right and this disengages the autopilot over here these buttons doesn't have any function yet this one will display the engine information down below uh, your statistics about the aircraft your electrical system page uh, your fuel information uh, EKS and flight control flight control is working so this is where you see your uh, you see rudders your yaw your pitch as well as the speed brakes if I deploy them you see the speed brakes are coming into the uh, play over there hydraulic page is not active uh, doors page is working and it will show the open doors gear is not working at the moment and the info is not working and the checklist and nav uh, pages are not working as well okay so that's the MCP and AFIS panels uh, and as you remember from Air, uh, Airbus A320 you can cycle between plan mode, map mode, VOR and approach modes uh, on the ND and if you press the center button it will change the display to a uh, 360 degree uh, radial from this one over here this is the range that you can increase or decrease the range of the ND display and pressing this now brings the traffic information to the ND okay um, over here these doesn't have any functions yet uh, your uh, landing gear your auto brakes which we will set to RTO rejected takeoff before takeoff and when landing you can set to your desired braking level based on the length of the runway uh, none of these is working so I'm gonna skip those and that and those knobs are not working as well over here we discussed the MC FMC uh, in the episode 20 and how to do the flight plan so I'm gonna skip that part your throttle quadrant your flap lever your speed brakes uh, your throttle for four engines step trim and your engine run switches or engine uh, cutoff switches are here over here is the radio panel one two three radios one two and three radios are on board uh, and this works somehow uh, you can switch between VHF and HF uh, but we'll usually use the VHF and you tune in the frequency from here and then this active standby switch will cycle between uh, active and standby uh, frequencies your microphone switches um, and your volume adjustment knobs uh, they are not working at the moment to be honest with you so we don't mess with these third FMC is here um, your transponder or TCAS system where you set your squat code and usually you leave it at uh, standby on the ground and you move it to TARA uh, when taking off rudder trim is over here flight deck door uh, lock this is not working so we will skip that part too uh, this is the third radio panels uh, volume uh, controls and that's about it for the pedestal except uh, your parking brake is over here and that's about it for the pedestal <coughs> let's see what else uh, we have I think this is all the panels that this aircraft has in the cockpit we have looked into pretty much all of them uh, This pilot oxygen and the heaters and 
nothing over here, the window uh, switch is not working. This tablet hopefully will work in the future when they develop the mod uh, forward with added uh, systems. Hopefully I'm expecting to see some information or at least an option to bring the charts to here uh, in the future. But other than that I think we covered pretty much everything. At the back there is a third seat in this cockpit for a third uh, pilot, co-pilot, uh, navigation officer, whatever they call that person's role. But nothing over here is functional so we are not going to worry about any of those. And at the top to the back is your uh, circuit breaker panel which doesn't have any functions at the moment. So we will skip that too. I hope this explains uh, the buttons and knobs in the cockpit and helps you familiarize yourself with the systems and where to touch and what to rotate uh, when you are adjusting the systems. Um, just wanted to keep this short because this is an in-between episode and I'm pretty sure you have already seen the next episode where we plan the flight and the, the cold and dark startup. So I think this is going to be it for this short tutorial and uh, I will see you in the next video.